How many calories uh, would the average squirrel provide? <laughs> One of the things that I'm like super passionate about is animation because I'm kind of a big kid. Like I love animation and I've written for animated TV series. And so I'm going to nerd out with this guy for a minute. So excuse me. Uh, but this guy is one of the most iconic voices in kids animation. It is Mike Naraki. How are you? Hey, Wally. How are you? So good to be here, man. Yeah. So you hear it. You hear it. You hear it in his regular voice just a little bit. You know him from <laughs> Veggie Tales. He's the voice of Larry the Cucumber. Hello, Wally. It's I know. great to be here. Just got to scoot it up there a little bit. There comes Larry. Well, that's it. I mean, you, you kind of hear it in your normal voice. So, like, have people been like, wait, when you're out, are they, and you're, like, just ordering at McDonald's? Or, like, like wait a minute. I recognize that. I know this guy. <laughs> Does that happen to you? You know, it happened when my kids were younger because I would, uh, when I was out with my kids, I would tend to kind of use a little higher voice with my kids sure. when I talk to them. And, you know, people could recognize that more as the Larry voice. But, uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of one of the nice things about being, you know, quote unquote famous um, as an animated character because people, you know, I can go out and still be anonymous, which yeah. is great. So I get recognized by because we do a lot of videos now, so people yeah. see me more than ever. Yeah. But I'll get recognized by my voice sometimes. Yeah. And I remember one time I was at a uh, a restaurant and there was uh -huh. booze and it was split by a wall, like a half wall. Yeah. And so we were hanging out and laughing and stuff like this, and this head pops over the wall <laughs> like a puppet. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> hey, are you Wally? And I'm like, yeah, I am. And and yeah. and he goes, oh, I could tell by the laugh and i go oh okay cool thanks man and he goes no i hate it oh <laughs> like, no <yes. laughs> like, so he pops up from his dinner just specifically to tell me that he hates my laugh and then that head just disappears back behind <laughs> goes, the wall does a little puppet walk right now <laughs> yeah, that's it it's like all right was that necessary all right, all right well thank you sir <laughs> oh, so man. you started veggie tales how long ago was that uh, so, boy, we're coming up almost 30 years. So, 93 was our very first episode. That is so, crazy. I know. Isn't that nuts? Yeah, I can't yeah, believe yeah. it's that long. So, 20, 28 years ago. Man, yeah. like, I don't think you could have predicted the success of Veggie Tales, but at some point in time, you're working on it, and then all of a sudden, you go, okay, I think we have something here. Like, do you yeah. remember, like, a moment like that when you're like, this is going to work? Yeah. So, there was a couple for me. Like, the first one was even before we put it out, I remember... Uh, we were rent. This was up in Chicago, so we were renting some office space in the old Chicago Sometimes building, and uh, from a friend uh, who had an architectural firm there. And we were rendering out the because uh, uh, back in the early days with with computer uh, CGI, it would just kind of render line by line. You'd see the lines kind of coming down. And uh, I was watching Junior Asparagus's living room from Where's God When I'm Scared, just sort of render out line by line. And at that time, computer animation was so new and so novel just in the way it looked the environments that it could create and i just remember being so transfixed by that image thinking oh my goodness we've got these stories that i think parents are going to love they're going to be funny but told in this and and with a great message but told in this world i think this is going to really work yeah you know? so that, that was the first thing so computer animation was such a big part of that and then the next time i remember thinking that you know, we 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 raised enough money to make a first episode, and we sold copies uh, based on ads that we took out in a Christian parent Christian parenting magazines. Sold about 500 copies, uh, so it didn't come anywhere near our production cost. <laughs> <laughs> so, Isn't that always the case? <laughs> exactly. But we did get a, a one of the orders came from a record label, Everlyn Entertainment, a division of Word Records, who was who was starting up a kids label. They ordered a copy. They loved the show. Signed us onto a distribution deal and started distributing us. And but it still took a number of years for it to really start to catch on. But the the second time for me is when I heard that there were. Uh, at colleges, there were dorm watching Veggie Tales parties. I was like, with, starting with, with college kids. With college okay. kids. So this was probably so we started in '93. So this is probably by '95. I started to hear this that it was starting to catch on in colleges. Really. And at that point, it's like, oh my gosh, this is you know. And we were we were basically that age too. We weren't much older than college age at the time ourselves. Right. And so it's like, wow, you know, this is really you know, uh, we could really could have something here. That's really cool, man. Like, okay, so now you have kids. How many kids do you have? Two kids. You have two kids. Did they grow up with Veggie Tales, and did they get it, or were they just unimpressed, like, by your dad creates all this stuff? <laughs> you know, a little of both, a little okay. of both. So my, uh, so my daughter is now... Uh, 22 and my son is 19. So they all, they both grew up, they both grew up in Veggie Tales. Um, you know, when they were really little, it was so cool because Larry and dad were two different 
things to them. You know, I could actually speak in my Larry voice with the Larry plush in hand, and my right. daughter was for sure it was Larry that Brush was talking teeth, to her and not you know? dad. <laughs> you know? um, and then as they got older, um, you know, probably in the like late grade school, early middle school, maybe they, you know, because that's kind of when kids maybe start to pull away, you know, from their parents. Um, but then a little bit later, um, even later middle school and high school, you know, especially with my son, he started to use it as street cred. You oh, know? yeah. <laughs> yeah my, like, hey, my dad's Larry. Larry. He's yeah. Larry. I'll see if I can yeah. get you like an in at the produce section. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I remember my daughter, because I've always worked in radio since she yeah. was born, like it's yeah. been my whole career. And yeah. uh, and uh, very unimpressed with what I do. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Like, exactly. And, but yeah. then we were at some event and uh, Kevin from Kevin and Taylor on The Fish uh -huh. was hosting. And she's like, hey, dad. She's like, I'm like, what? And she's like. Do you think you can introduce me to Kevin? I'm like, <laughs> he does the same thing your father does, and I'm going to say not as well. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, oh man. the knife. <laughs> oh, man. So, okay, so you've got kids, and then, like, did you ever mess up, like, as a dad and, and have your voice of you slide into Larry voice when you were, like, disciplining them? Because that would mess a kid up. Like, being yelled at by Larry the Cucumber, I think would jack you up. <laughs> what did you post on social? media exactly. what if your mother and i told you <laughs> i'll never love you you know like, ah, that was too much <laughs> oh okay so now you have a new project out okay so You've moved on from Veggie Tales, and you have a new project out called Dead Sea Squirrels. Dead Sea Squirrels! Stop the salination! Dead Sea Squirrels! Dehydrated do it! And I'm assuming it's a play off of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Did there I get you that go. right? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yep, I'm, yep. I'm pretty biblical. Uh, <laughs> You're pretty biblical like that. Yeah, <laughs> so it, it's another Bible centric storytelling uh, vehicle for kids, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's um, the idea is there's these two squirrels who took an ill who grew up in Galilee, uh, and and, you know, experienced uh, basically the life and ministry and teaching of Jesus from their perch in trees in Galilee above the Sea of Galilee. So kind of bystanders watching it all unfold. Right, right, Got right. It. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, they take an ill-advised vacation uh, down the Jordan River. Merle, per Merle and Pearl are their names. Merle sure. has always wanted to see the Dead Sea because he heard you can't sink. He heard you can't sink. So, but it's no place for squirrels. Uh, they end up actually, you know, getting trapped in a cave you know, they're salt encrusted. Uh, they dehydrate. They're preserved for 2,000 years <laughs> until Michael, a 10-year-old kid, uh, soon to be in fifth grade, is spending a summer with his dad, who's an archaeologist uh, on a dig at the Dead Sea, runs across across these squirrels, uh, just sort of petrified. He thinks they're the coolest things he's ever seen and stashes them in his backpack and takes them back home with him to Tennessee um, and uh, leaves them, you know, on his dresser, kind of posed like, you know, cool vacation souvenirs, windows open, they get rained on and come back to life. Nice, uh, so they're they reanimated. Yeah, they, re ah. they rehydrate, re you know, so they've just been preserved in sea salt for, for millennia. Okay. So, but, so they speak into his life, uh, you know, from, as, from, you know, the, the wisdom of the ages and, and having seen Jesus in his, uh, in his ministry in, into what Michael is experiencing as a, as a 10 year old boy. I am always, uh, you know, impressed by or curious by the genesis of the idea. Like, yeah, cause, yeah. Cause because yeah. you never know, like like listening to you tell the story and you're an adult, uh, you know, <laughs> where it all seems so perfectly normal. <laughs> yeah, you know, and like somebody has to be going. All right, now where did you come up with this idea? Were you sitting at a park watching squirrels and you're like, I got it, I got this. Like like where where were you when the genesis of this idea hit you? I remember. I actually remember this. I was. Uh, it, it was probably a dozen years ago. Um, in a, I was traveling for work for for Veggie Tales for a Big Idea, and in a hotel, I, in a hotel room, the the idea came to me. And and part of it, part of the reason is with Veggie Tales, we drew a line in the sand early on that we were never going to depict Jesus as a vegetable. You know, oh we, sure, we you were. Know, you know, it makes sense, line. right? Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a good what, line. What vegetable did you ever like <laughs> bat it around? Like, okay, if we did, would he be a carrot? Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there are people that don't like carrots. It was a no-win situation. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you can't make so, him broccoli. You know? Exactly. Oh, so um, so uh, so that kind of limited the amount of New Testament stories we could tell for Veggie Tales, and so just sort of looking for a vehicle to be able to say, okay, what kind of property or what kind of story could we use to to do this? And so, and and for me, a lot of things start as bad puns. Obviously, Veggie Tales and you know Dead Sea Squirrels. Yeah. And so that's that's when it came to me. It's like, okay, what if we instead of going back to Bible times and telling stories, what if we took two characters from that time and brought them forward in time. And so it first occurred to me as a, 
you know, an idea for an animated series um, that just sort of, you know, kind of rattled around in my brain for a few years. Um, and then when I left Big Idea full time in 2016, um, uh, I was looking to maybe then develop that as an animated series. But uh, my my agent, Dan Lynch, who his background was in publishing, he said, hey, have you ever thought about doing this as an early reader uh, yeah. series? And I hadn't. But I thought, oh, wow, what a great idea, uh, because, you know, there's so much of the storytelling is is similar. And with early readers, there's a lot of you know, illustration and sketching, which is basically like storyboarding. Um, and so, so yeah, so I just did some research and dove into that and developed a, you know, a six series idea as a book, um, pitched it to Tyndale publishers up in Chicago. They loved it. And then, um, the first, the first six books are out now. Uh, the next two books come out in April, and then eventually there'll be 12 books in the series. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, so yeah. you went book first, and then you're like, yeah, let's do this as animation. Because yeah, the yeah. animation world, I, the thing I love about it, it, you can place it anywhere. You can take it anywhere, and it can be oh, as yeah. bizarre. It's, it's not limited by anything, which right. is so great. Yeah. Uh, now, you have uh, the iconic voice of Larry, obviously, Larry the Cucumber, and it's so recognizable. Do you voice anything inside of this uh, Dead Sea Squirrels? Yeah, so I am the voice of Merle Squirrel. Oh, you are Merle. Okay. Yeah, Merle, Merle Squirrel, and uh, uh, so that that's been fun. And it, his voice, you know, it's I'm so comfortable as Larry. I've been doing him for so many years, but you know, Merle's more of a he's kind of a high talking. We pitch his voice up, make yeah. him like buddy, kind of kind of that old Hollywood kind of voice. Yeah, you know, kind, kind of, of like thing. almost like Mr. Newsreel. Like, yeah, it, it exactly. Like a newsreel kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's sort, sort of a little, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's <laughs> a, that, that kind of flavor uh, is is kind of where Merle is sitting right now. But who knows where he'll go in the future? Because with Larry, his voice voice for the first three shows is completely where it, different than what it is now. It's sort yeah. of evolved over time. It always evolves. Like, all yeah. of that stuff as you, and, and characters evolve as you start to, because you start writing the backstory and as much as you can get in for the mini Bible and you want to try and figure it all out, you know, ahead of time. And the, the, the best ones have that stuff figured out. Yeah. But then it still has to grow and then right. all the new ideas and the new interplays right. takes it to a new level. It does. And these characters, you know, you're, you're sensing for a sense of personality and reality and they sort of grow over time with you and that certainly happened with me with Larry you know it's like finding finding who that character is within my own kind of personality yeah now do you guys have uh music in this like because that's one thing veggie tales was synonymous with like really catchy earworm uh songs yeah. that as an adult will not leave your head you <laughs> yeah, know yeah, but yeah, your yeah. kid is happy to sing them a thousand times <laughs> oh where is my hairbrush everybody's got a water buffalo they turn blue. What could I do? She had a beard and it felt weird. Yeah. Is music a, 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 a funk a part of this one? Yeah, that was super important for me as we started to develop this into an animated series. Um, and I can t tell you a little bit about that that whole story. Uh, but you know, having having music being a central part of it was really important. And so there's a there's a section in each of the books and and then each of the episodes. Uh, called uh, Squirrel's Eye View, where it's when Merle and Pearl remember back to, you know, the day, you know, that that kind of has to do with the theme of that particular uh, episode. Um, and that's all in music. Okay. So, yeah, so so that'll be a musical number for for every show. And we, we've, you know, the pilot is done. So we've 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 uh, animated a pilot for the series. And that that's got a big, big kind of uh, musical number in there as well. So it's it, it's, it's great. Music Very is a cool. key part of it. Very cool. So now, telling these stories, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things in cartoon form. Some might think that it's childish, but actually telling a good story in a cartoon has to work on two levels. You oh, have right. to appeal to the kids. you got to appeal to adults. Right. It, it's tricky. And so there's a much bigger picture, though, than just doing a cute cartoon for you, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So with VeggieTales, as with Squirrels, you know— I it, I I feel like this is my ministry, and right. um, you know, uh, you know, I went I, I I went forward at a youth conference when I was in high school and dedicated my vocation to ministry, and I thought that would look very different from what it turned into, but story is so important in the lives of kids. It forms their how they look at the world, their own worldview, and and telling stories with characters who assume that there's a God who made us, who loves us, who wants a relationship with us is really, you know, it's really important in their lives. And, and so much of what kids view in media, that that worldview is completely absent. Um, and so I just want to be, as a storyteller, a part of creating really engaging, entertaining stories 
uh, that represents um, the, that that worldview to kids. Yeah, because it's so important. And that's the way that they they connect, though, too. It, yeah. Because th- you can sit a kid at church yeah. right next to you in the pew, and it's, it's like most of that stuff isn't going to land. Yeah. But you got a squirrel telling them. And it's, <laughs> They're going to listen, it's right? Good, yeah, you're going to get, I got a talking squirrel telling me to be nice to each other. Right. I'm going to do this, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, I know that you guys, uh, like you said, you have a pilot done, and, uh, you know, and you're fundraising. Are, are, are there uh, any idea where the show is going to actually land when people can see it? Yeah, so the whole... Uh, the, the, everything now in, in, in animation and in film is about streaming, you know, streaming sure. services. And so that's that's eventually where this is headed. So we're we're, uh, you know, getting the funding together for uh, our first six, uh, six shows. So the pilot plus five, which will encapsulate the first six books. Um, and then from there, um, hoping to get a streaming deal on a or multiple streaming platforms. Sure. It'd be interesting. Like, I, I'm curious if like a Disney plus would touch you guys at all where it's so religious. Because yeah. like, like Disney Plus, it's interesting because Disney Plus has things on there that I'm like, as a parent, we're like, oh no, uh, I don't want that for my kitty. So they have stuff on that side of this right. spectrum. Yeah. You would think, hey, let's balance it out. Let's put some other stuff in here that's like really good right. for kids as well. But I don't know if it's just too close to, to with so much faith. A lot of a lot of the streaming services like to stay away from that. Although you know, I I hope that'll change just because. It's such a big part of the population. I mean, they're in the business of, of getting eyeballs and getting subscri- subscriptions, you know, right. for their uh, for their services. So, um, you know, and I, I really do feel like if there's really because you know, VeggieTales was on Netflix, um, you know, for a number of years. We had VeggieTales and Three Two One Penguins on NBC. Right, right. So I think if you can produce shows uh, that are really engaging to kids and a high enough uh, quality, um, you know, you've got a much better shot of being on. Uh, you know, a platform like that. And and I think, you know, the, the, the goal is for any storyteller is just to get the story out to as many people as, as possible. And, yeah. so, and there, there are Christian streaming services, but then there are, you know, just the big, you know, Netflixes and Hulus of the world too. But, you know, I we, we just want to get the show out to as many people as we can. Yeah, because it's great to super serve like the Christian audience, which is fine. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But right. you're right, it's limited though too and yeah. where it can go. So if you can crack both of those, right. then that's what you ultimately want. I want to find out how much research you did uh, into your squirrel project here, okay? All right, Because right. I learned I'm more nervous. about squirrels in one night than I ever thought I would know. So we're going to play right. a little game here. All right. Squirrel trivia. All right, very okay? good. Okay, so right. here we go. A squirrel is a rodent, which I'm sure you knew, uh, but did you know that the name comes from the Latin rodeer? What does that mean? Does it mean furry, jumpy, or gnaw? Rodeer. Rodeer. Furry, jumpy, jumpy or gnaw. I'm going to go with gnaw. Gnaw? Yeah. Okay, why? Just because of the chewing aspect You're of absolutely that. right. Did you know a squirrel's front teeth never stop growing? And so Radir is wow. actually to gnaw. Wow. Yeah. How about that? Look at wow. that. Wow. Look, Look at that. And well, with a name like Gnaw Rocky, you know. You, oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, you should get that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that has anything to do with my name. Uh, <laughs> when squirrels feel threatened, they A, play dead, B, run away in a zigzag pattern, or C, up chuck nuts to gross out predators. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> It's just this this is just from experience. I think they run away in a zigzag pattern. Okay. You're absolutely right. Whoa, all right. It Look at the squirrel knowledge in this guy. Phenomenal with <laughs> hawks, not so much with cars. Because you watch <laughs> oh, a, you watch the squirrel like try to beat the car and like don't zigzag. No, don't don't no, zigzag. No, 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 no. Oh, Why? Man. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> I I uh, I got my motorcycle license a number of years ago, and the thing that they nailed into your head uh when you were getting it is you know, if something runs out in the road, you have to make that an- yes. immediate decision of if it's squishable or not. Yeah. If it's uh, as on a motorcycle, if it's squishable, just keep going. Uh, just, <laughs> you know? Don't look back. <laughs> don't look back. <laughs> well, if, it's a, if it's a deer you want to avoid, that's not squishable. You're really but. crushing this thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How many toes do squirrels have on their front feet? Oh, okay. Man. Now this should have been something you like. You guys got to research what squirrels look like to animate them. Oh yeah, for boy. the Dead Sea squirrels. Oh, this could be. I'm gonna say they have. 
four toes. Okay. Now, are you saying that because animators don't draw five-fingered characters? <laughs> Maybe that is. Maybe <laughs> that is. For some reason, I'm just thinking the number four is sticking in my head. I don't know if that's right or not. That is absolutely right. Wow. Look at that. Now, their front paws have four. Uh -huh. Their back have five. Oh, uh, wow. So okay. Well, I didn't know that. Learning so, something new today. Well, yeah, absolutely. That's okay. Me. So now, now, do you guys, Is that is, that's an old animation rule. Is it still the case? Like, I, I had always heard that people, they never drew humans with five fingers because it looked weird on the hand and that they would draw them with four. Oh, typically. yeah. Well, I know like Mickey Mouse has got like four giant yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, four giant ones. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but I don't, you know, maybe, maybe in the super cartoony, I don't even, I, I'd have to go back and look at like, like the Flintstones or, yeah. you know, the Hanna-Barbera stuff, certainly with Disney, you know, like Cinderella and all that, 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 was, that was pretty photo real. Anime, with how they did. yeah, because yeah, that yeah. was more like trying to be atomically correct. Right, yeah. right, right. Uh, back in 20, uh, 2007, what country claimed that 14 squirrels found that near the nation's border uh, were actually spies? Okay, they thought these squirrels were spies. Is it Iran, Iraq, or Israel? All the eyes. Wow. The eyes. I'm going to go with Iran. Man, it's like you did every bit of your homework. Iran is absolutely <laughs> wow. right. And that seems fitting, right? Doesn't it? Or I remember some story about <laughs> hikers getting trapped in Iran. I don't know if that's the same thing. Oh, so, uh, no, but these were know. actually just real squirrels. They were real and squirrels. They, they oh, wow. They literally thought these squirrels were spies. That's hilarious. So it's an <laughs> Iranian motif of being, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> well, you uh, have just crushed this thing. I have one last question all for right, you. Right, and so right. here we go. Right. How many calories uh, would the average squirrel provide? If you needed, <laughs> yeah. if you had to have, if you had to eat Merle or Pearl squirrel, oh, you're man. out in a survival situation. How many would it be? How many calories is it? Fifty, one hundred, or one fifty? Oh man! And it's basically a, it's a that's a lot lower than I would have guessed. I'm glad you gave me a, a like a you know like a, a, a you know a choice there. I watch a lot of survival shows, uh -huh. so like I actually knew this one. You knew this one, yeah, without having to Google it. Man, well, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the top number just because I would have assumed that there would have been a lot more than 150. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. All right. So how much is it? 100. You were almost perfect. Oh, man. 100, 100 measly calories. So I guess yeah. they're mostly fur, right? They so, are. They, there's yeah. very little. And like the little uh, legs, like a, like, a, uh, like a chicken leg, you know, like for a squirrel. <laughs> it's very see, tiny. You, know, like no you, have, yeah, you, you don't get much meat off of those things. So <laughs> oh, man. There you go. Oh. Mike Naraki, uh, the project is Dead Sea Squirrels and hopefully coming to a streaming service uh, near you soon. So be on the look for that because it's uh, good stuff.